Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Friday, the 24th of August, 2012, and this is Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net. Uh, if my voice sounds a little bit funny or if I'm, it sounds like I'm on a tunnel, that's because I'm recording this on my laptop. I've got an issue with my main machine, so uh, just put up with that, I guess. But the markets today had a nice recovery, came down uh, just to that 20-day moving average in this prior little area of resistance. This was a level that we were looking for uh, in, the, in uh, the subscriber site for us to come down and find some support. I didn't expect that it would bounce right off of that level, but obviously that's exactly what it did here today. Um, we uh, broke this little pattern of lower highs and lower lows. So we started out the week looking for a correction. We got that correction, and um, now it looks like the buyers are back in control, but it's just a little bit more neutral than really positive because we have this declining five-day moving average still, and we're uh, just below this prior little important level as well. So if we back it up to a 30 minute time frame we can see that this was the area we were kind of looking for early on in the week to be tested and I said that you know if we broke below that a little bit and tested the 20 day moving average that would be healthy um, we've you know been holding the 10 day moving average as that broke we uh, came down and again tested the 20 so we've been, we've had low volume this whole rally so just forget about volume I mean a lot of people are making an issue about volume and that sort of thing only price pays so let's just stay focused on the price action and know that when it's making lower highs and lower lows, the odds don't favor the long side trade in the short to intermediate term. But then when we look at the uh, bigger picture, the daily time frame, we still have this uptrend and we're kind of, you know, looking at the, um, uh, the, I'm sorry, I just kind of drew that wrong. What I meant to draw was this, was basically the midpoint of what this channel has been. And this is really, um, you can say, well, why don't I draw it off of here, which I suppose I could do. But we've spent most of the time above this line, and we've got, uh, if we see further weakness uh, next week, then I think even a pullback down towards 139 wouldn't be a horrible thing. Um, so it's kind of yellow cautionary here, kind of turning back to positive. That is, the buyers are starting to show that they have the ability to, uh, to to come back in here today after this gap lower and we did have some news but um, you know that didn't come till really right over here initially we had some resistance right at the pivot and uh, the two-day volume weighted average price and for the week if we take a look at where we are we're pretty much right on the volume weighted average price for the week so um, basically you could look at it as is kind of neutral from that standpoint although we were down just uh, a little bit here today's action we've remained above that rising volume weighted average price throughout the session and made it close to daily r2 so a good constructive session in a positive uptrend on the daily time frame again we've got the rising 10 20 and 50 day moving average here on the daily time frame uh, but when we take a look at the shorter term time frame it suggested some caution and that's you know what we see when the the time frame send us mixed messages that it's time to just kind of slow things down a little bit, let the market set up and tell us what to do. The NASDAQ uh, came in to uh, pretty just above what's been a pretty important level at about this uh, 67 and a half area. Today's low was 67.60. So um, you know, this prior resistance, which was actually support back in here for a little bit, uh, we're holding above that. So I think 67 and a half is an important level. We did hold the 10 day moving average for the NASDAQ. So relatively, we're strong stronger in the NASDAQ and you can see that here on the 10 minute time frame as well that we had some really choppy action the last few sessions you know the market tried to break out gap down try to recover gap down again today still trying to recover that five day moving average is turning sideways back above 6860 next week and I think that this is just looking like a nice little uh, bullish flag and we should be able to continue to move higher and we are of course at uh, multiple year highs for the NASDAQ when we take a look at the horizontal line as far as where we are. Uh, we haven't been here since 2000 and really the, you know where is the next potential upside target maybe near 75 bucks. Uh, it's tough to say that that's going to happen but I think that next week we'll want to see that 6750 does hold up. If it does continue to hold above that level then uh, we've still got to give the benefit of the doubt to the buyers especially with this rising 10, 20, 50, 100, 150 and 200 day moving average. So still constructive action. The Underperformer still is the uh, Russell 2000, but I like the action in here. Uh, we, you know, we were talking about this is what I think represents the inverted head and shoulders pattern. This is what we've been talking about here uh, for the last several weeks. We broke beyond that uh, just uh, last week, and now we pulled back and tested it. So this 
little breakout point here was tested. We held on a closing basis for the week. We're right at that 10-day moving average. In fact, uh, just five pennies below it. Uh, but the you know it's looking like a constructive uh, pullback here. That actually, if you look at it, I said to ignore volume, but it's good to see the lighter volume as it does pull back. Um, again, only price pays, and the price action is constructive with a rising 10, 20, and 50-day moving average. Here we see on the 30-minute uh, time frame, you know this prior little level held as uh, some support intraday today. We do have a declining five-day moving average, and we're stuck below that. So let's look at the 10-minute time frame to get a closer look. I think that we've got to be just a little bit cautious till the market can get above and hold above 8150. Um, and next week we'll want to see the 80 dollars holds as a level of support back down below 80. Then I think that's a problem because that's where we have our 20-day moving average as well, and hopefully it should be contained there. But we've got this bigger uh, bullish pattern, which when we take a look at the height of it is about 82 and a half down to about 73 and a half. So that's nine points. If you are looking for the potential upward target based on the break of this, the break occurred at 80 and a half. So we would be looking at, uh, what did I say, nine points there. Uh, so we'd be looking at 89 and a half. And to look at a weekly time frame, is that reasonable uh, to expect? Well, it's pretty far away up here at 89 and a half. This is again. Here's you know even even this inverted head and shoulders pattern here that we've been we were just discussing on the daily time frame. You can see that we've got this shoulder, we've got this head, and we've got this as a bigger head and shoulders pattern with our neckline. You know, kind of looking like this, more of a band of resistance up there. So if we can begin to you know work beyond uh, these levels on a closing basis about 82 then this market appears to be uh, set back up to continue higher we've got a rising 50 100 150 and 200 day moving average and this is our short-term reason for just a little bit of concern which is a declining five-day moving average so we want to see this level hold perhaps we break down slightly through it then rally back up back above 8150 should be key for next week I think if it does that then this is going to look like a little bullish flag and then we uh, see the next thrust higher which should take us at least to obviously this week's highs just under 83 but I think uh, 84 to 84 and a half is is uh, possible and uh, likely uh, for next week if we can get above and hold above 81 and a half the semiconductors had been uh, a little bit of reason for concern and still are I think on an intraday action but when we take a look uh, we don't want to obsess with the intraday action because what we've been talking about in here is the 33 Three, you know, 3280 uh, to 3310. That this prior band of support, which then offered resistance over in here, we saw the market have a very strong rally. It broke beyond that. This market was first to uh, show us some weakness this week, and that had given us reason for concern. On uh, I believe it was Monday. I was telling uh, subscribers that we wanted to, you know, really pay attention to these semiconductors. I think they're the best leading indicator for the broader market. A lot of people, you know, will look at the dollar, or they'll look at gold, or they'll look at the euro, and that sort of thing. But I think the real, uh, you know, over my career, over the last 20 years of looking at the market, I think that we've got the, um, you know, the semiconductors have been the most consistent um, leaders uh, to the upside and downside. So they are still above a key level of support, which is nice to see uh, on that 60. Here's a 65 minute time frame. Let's just tighten that up a little bit because this makes it a little bit easier to see here that this has been an important level here. And I would extend that down to even 32 and a half. I wouldn't be concerned unless we were down below 32 and a half in the semiconductors. What I think is likely to happen is next week if we get back above about $33.40 that's going to be the key level where the buyers really gain back control and those who people who are shorting in here uh, looking for it to break down further uh, would would likely be uh, the victims of a, a little bearish trap now that's not a prediction but I'm saying if we get back up above that 3340 I think that's very likely for now we have to remain very cautious because we are below a declining five-day moving average and it's still possible that this market can fail so if we get below 3275 next week 
pay very att uh, close attention to the broader market because I think it's likely to follow the action of the semiconductors. For now, though, we'll look at today as it was up 10 cents. It's starting to recover. We've got a little bit of uh, a key level here for early next week to deal with at 33.15, but 33.40 is our, our main level that we want to keep an eye on. The financials were up uh, eight pennies today, and this group also, you know, came down to that 15.10 level that was prior support. Uh, I'm sorry, prior resistance and the, the 10 day, uh, rising 20-day moving average as well. So the key levels in here have really been about 15, then back up to about 15 and a quarter. Uh, we we met, you know, when we broke 15, we were looking for it to move up to 15 and a quarter. We've pulled back, tested some support. We've got it right at that five-day moving average, which is flattened out. So again, a little bit more neutral here till we do a little bit further uh, constructive action and probably get back above $15.25 uh, would be the key for, for the financials to, to be able to find the energy to make it uh, back up to about maybe 15 and a half next week. As we saw last week, uh, silver had broken out first. Uh, I'm sorry, this was on Monday. On, on Monday, silver had broken out, and we were talking about how that was likely to lead a rally in gold. And, and silver continued very nicely higher, by the way. If you look at it, it's right up to that 200-day moving average. So from a longer-term basis, I still think it's possible that you know this is not going to stay up here. Uh, and we'll take a look at the bonds in a moment. Uh, to, to give a good example of that. In fact, let's let's take a look at the bond yield right now, uh, which I have to type in here because this is a different computer and I didn't have it on here. But the 10-year bond uh, yield got up right, you know, right up to that declining 200-day moving average. So if you look at where the bond yield is at 1.67 uh, uh, and where it just got up to that 200-day moving average, now take a look at silver and you see a similar type of rally. Now, it's not a prediction, but this is something to say you have to be aware of where has it come from, where does it have the potential to go. And the fact is, silver has had a, a nice little run from 27.5 to 29.5. So it's, it's had about a 10% rally, uh, maybe about 8%, and it's up to a declining 200-day moving average. So we would expect at least for it to slow down in here. I don't think it would make sense to, to make new purchases in here. This is a prior level of support as well. So be on the alert that silver could at least pull back for a bit, uh, down maybe towards 28.5. But let's take a look at gold now, because gold on Tuesday gapped higher, and it continued to break out. So we were talking about this level uh, for the last couple of weeks and talking about the constructive action of the higher lows. And you know this market did in fact follow silver. You had to be in it uh, or chase the you know chase the gap higher uh, on Monday. But we had nice uh, follow through for the week as well. So gold is up beyond its 200-day moving average, and it hasn't closed above there uh, since well back here, um, and that was back in. Um, you know, March of this year. So we've we've had a decent little run. Perhaps we run into a little bit of resistance at this uh, level, but gold is starting to look better. I don't think it's. Uh, I, I think a, a pullback would make a lot of sense down towards 159 or so. Um, the, the U.S. dollar uh, started, you know, came down to some su uh, support from earlier than in this year. And if you take a look, uh, go back a little bit further, we can kind of see the significance of that. And again, the 200-day moving average is where it found some support. So. So it looks like the dollar gets a bounce maybe up towards 2270 uh, and then we'll see how it acts but the uh, the bonds again you know the bonds um uh, we take a look in there. They came down further than I expected. Last week, I think I was expecting that this level would hold as support, or was likely to hold as support. But, but you know, we look at these things and we say it's likely to hold as support, but we don't want to buy until there's actual evidence. And with a declining five-day moving average in the TLT all for this entire move, it said that, it, you know, you could be looking for support in there, but it doesn't mean it's going to bounce. It's very similar to what I was talking about in the blog post on Alpha trends.net uh, that I did about Baidu and how people were looking for the 50-day moving average to hold the support. You know, the stock had a real nice rally. It failed at the 10. It failed at the 20. People were, a lot of people were buying, expecting the 50-day moving average to hold and get a bounce there. Well, this is at 118.5. And, and on Thursday, we saw that you know, when it got down to that 118.5, it just continued to decline. It was below the volume-weighted average price. And now it's just kind of uh, flattening out. But Baidu still has some issues here, obviously. Let's go back to the uh, the yield though because the yield is now in an area where 
it, it, the yield should find support, it looks like, uh, after declining from that 200-day moving average. And the you know, markets are still very constructive. Again, we you know, with the, the SPY bouncing off that 20-day moving average was real important for, for this week. And uh, next week, we'll want to see that these lows from uh, Thursday hold for the equities and uh, look for a continued upside with uh, with some good leadership still. I mean, you look at Apple, it's, it's uh, the most valuable company on the planet now. And in here, it does have the pattern that we look for more in stocks than the equities, which is rising on advancing uh, volume. And then relative to that advance, we want to see the volume diminish. It says that there's not a lot of sellers uh, looking to get out. We've got this 650 level broken. It's holding us support. And, uh, you know, Apple continues to look bullish. It's had a nice run recently, but it's digesting these gains really through time and above a rising five-day moving average with higher lows. So back above 670 next week, it looks like Apple should be able to continue again and my phone's ringing so i'm gonna sign out that'll do it thanks for tuning in